exploring limitations, we are going to take digital recordings that I made live of a real band in a real New York City bar, and then we're gonna send those recordings into the cassette Porta studio, and we're going to ask ourselves, can you hear the difference? Here we go. I haven't done one of these in a while. A good old fashioned, can you hear the difference episode? I got a digital recording, just four tracks. So we're gonna send those into the cassette and we're gonna see how they sound. Before we get there, I wanna tell you who I recorded and when. This was back in the fall, every Sunday at a place called Domini's in Astoria for the last 10 years is an amazing band. They call themselves Trample Man. It's Christian Coleman on drums, Sam Trapcheck on bass, and Brock James Hempel on the keys when he's in town. He now lives in Brazil. And there's also tons of guest musicians who come in and jam with them all the time. Dominis is set up at a very narrow bar, a room that you walk into, and the band is squeezed on the left. It's a type of place that can get a little rambunctious, if you know what I mean. It would be fun to bring us Porta Studio 2 and just record straight to tape, but I'm also worried that something might happen to it. <laughs> so instead, I used one of these Zoom R24 digital recorders. It is a very, very simple machine. There's no EQ on it. It's just a preamp of, of gain, it's, and that's it. In addition to the Zoom R24, let me just break down each track to tell you how quickly how I recorded it. Drums. This is the drum sound right here. This is the Bayer Dynamic M201, and I stuck it right above the kick drum, pointed at the snare. Upright bass, to play in a loud venue with loud drums, he goes through an amp. I'm an upright bass player myself, and we develop our sound acoustically, but we do have to play through amplifiers, and I took a direct feed from his amplifier. It was a very good sound, and if you accept it for what it is, you can do great things with it. Keys. This is actually kind of a reamper, multi-purpose, Little Labs, Phantom 3D. I took the keyboard feed from this, and then for the room sound, which also includes the recordings of the guest saxophone players, use this, my favorite omnidirectional dynamic mic. This is a Electro Voice 635A. All right, with all that out of the way, let's get to the experiment. Pretty straightforward how to get your digital tracks into cassette land. Here's the other made on tape man here to explain. All right. Pardon the camera audio, but we're gonna take the recordings, which I'm gonna show you, which you can see here, you know, four tracks. Ignore this thing, that was just work. Each, each of these is being sent via an output through our Apollo interface. And then the outs, one, two, three, four, are going into this one, two, three, four scenario. And that is coming out over here on this side of the room. That's how the signal gets from there to the tape. And we're recording to this very cool looking like 1985 Maxell Gold USD 2. It's a UDS, USD, UDS. Anyway, that's the initial step. Uh, we're gonna get, transfer these tracks to tape, cassette, and then you're gonna have good audio again. Peace. It's that simple. Let's test our ears today. I'm gonna play you individual tracks and you'll guess whether they are coming from the cassette or if they're coming from the digital realm. Cassette is A, digital is B. Are you ready? Check it out. First, let's hear those drums. Do you think you could tell the difference? Is it making a difference? The first example you heard was A, the cassette drums. The second example you heard was B, the original digital recording. See what we're doing now? Do you like where this is going? Is it making a difference? Let's move on to the next track. Let's uh, listen to bass. Ready? You know the rules, here we go.
The first thing you heard was A, again, the cassette bass. Second thing you heard was B, the original digital recording. Is it making a difference? We're having fun, let's go to the next track. First one you heard was B, the digital recording. That means the second one you heard was A, the cassette recording. Moving on to the last track. This is the room mic sound, which picks up the saxophone players. There were two players. And depending on how close they were to this, gives you a sense of ambience or space or distance. Anyway, let's listen to that. First thing you heard was A, the cassette. That means the second thing you heard was B, the digital recording. Are you getting a feel, a flavor for it? Is it making a difference? 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 So when it comes to this idea of putting things in analog realm and cassette, I do believe the cumulative effects are greater to notice than when you pull out just individual tracks. So for this last and final example, I'm going to play a chunk of the mix. Are you ready? Here we go. First mix you heard was the digital mix, B. The second mix you heard then was from the cassette. I'm not gonna make any conclusions here on camera. I want that all to happen in the comments section today. Let me know how much you love cassette, how much you love digital, how digital music is the end of the world or cassette is for dinosaurs and all this stuff. I, I, I wanna hear it all, it's all good. Sincerely though, thank you so much for watching and your continued support. All of my links to my original music and my band camp are below. The patreon.com forward slash made on tape. That is a great way to support me if you're interested in doing that. And I it's very, very appreciated. There's always new content coming just for patrons. I wanna reiterate how awesome and badass this band is. I'm gonna put links to their stuff below and you should go see them if you're in town. I'm gonna to play a little bit longer of an excerpt from my mix. I'm gonna mix the whole song. It's 15 minutes long and I'm gonna play some of it for you right now. But with that as always is peace.
be good to each other.